been nearly six years since Microsoft released anything really interesting to do with Windows Autopilot. And, and it makes it quite difficult to produce new content about something that is old and hasn't changed really for six years. All of that changed this month, and some have called it Autopilot V2, whereas Microsoft are referring to it as just another method of using Autopilot. Whatever you call it, it is new, and so I'm going to take a look. So at intune.microsoft.com, the feature is called Windows Autopilot Device Preparation. So I'm going to go into Devices, Enrollment, and just at the bottom of the Windows tab here, we have Windows Autopilot Device Preparation. Now, I... We, we go into there to configure it. Before that, we need to make sure we've got the right groups in place, though. So let's go into groups. And I've actually followed the Microsoft documentation that I'll link below to name these groups just for consistency. And we have a group called device preparation device group and device preparation user group. Now, in the user group, I've added a few users from the environment. You could have all of your users in there. But for me, I've got, my, I've got six users in there. I'll go back to the device group. And you'll see in the device group, I have no members yet. The group is special in that devices get added to it as autopilot gets used, rather than the old approach where you would add devices in uh, to this devices list and it kind of would pick them up as they arrived on the Ubi screen. This is slightly different. One thing I haven't done yet because I wanted to show you is added the owner of this group. The service account that gets created magically by Microsoft needs to uh, own this group. I'm going to choose owners, add owners, and I think it's, it's something called Intune. There you go, Intune Provisioning Client, and that's it there. So it's an enterprise app that's been created by Microsoft in the tenant. I didn't do that. So we'll choose that and choose select. Now the Intune Provisioning Client owns this group and can make changes to it. And that will help with the just-in-time provisioning that takes place during this new version of Autopilot. I'm going to try to avoid calling it Autopilot V2, but it is very tempting. So there's the owners. That's pretty much all we need. Uh, uh, there's a load of prerequisites, generally, for Autopilot. The only real difference is, the, is the, these groups, the fact that you don't need to register devices with an Autopilot hardware hash and... Uh, also the Windows version, you need at least the March version of Windows 11, 23H2 or 22H2 in order to use this. Okay, enough talk. Let's go into Enrollment, Windows, down to Device Preparation, and we'll choose Create. And you're welcome to read the introduction. Otherwise, I'm just going to type Windows Autopilot dev pilot, Device Prep choose next and we go for the device group so that's the windows autopilot device preparation device group that i added and it's got no devices and no users that's perfectly fine choose next and now we configure device preparation so deployment settings all of these three are multiple choice boxes that sorry drop down boxes that don't have any options in them these are the only options we get with these absolutely fine this slider is one of those infuriating sliders that Microsoft have produced where it user account type isn't a thing that is on or off, right? But here we have an on or off. And the thing that is on or off is whether it's a standard user or uh, admin user. And when you toggle standard user off, you get administrator. When you toggle administrator on, you get standard user. It makes no sense at all, but that's what we have to live with for now. It's set to standard user, so the user, when they finish building this machine, will be a standard user. Out of box experience. So not a lot to choose here. 30 minutes before it shows an installation error. Now, if you've used autopilot in the past, the default was 60 minutes. And that kind of shows you how confident Microsoft were that it would be quick to deploy using autopilot. Here we have 30 minutes being the default. And that hopefully shows you how confident Microsoft are at getting this to use a bit quicker, 30 minutes. So next customer message. Now you're welcome to change the typo if you like that Microsoft have put in there by default. In fact, I will, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that. There you go. We're gonna change that to, um, organ that is how you spell organizations, perfect. Um, so we've changed that and then allow user to skip setup after multiple attempts. So if it goes wrong, 
lots, then they can skip it. Uh, show link to diagnostics, fine. Now apps, this is a bit different. We had the ESP, we still have the ESP I guess, but we had the ESP as our way of making sure apps got installed during autopilot. I'm gonna add a couple of apps here. Let me add uh, 7-Zip, Reflector, Berliner Etcher, FileZilla, uh, the latest version of Chrome, look at that, 142, and we'll do Mozilla and Notepad. I think that's probably the limit, really. Okay, so we'll save that. And in scripts, I haven't got any scripts, unfortunately, but that's where you would add up to 10 PowerShell scripts. I love the wording on these pages. It, it's always good to try and understand what it says. And it, it literally says these apps should be assigned to the device group you selected earlier. Now you might read from that that the apps should be assigned to the device group by you. Before you start this, you should make sure all the apps that you put in this list are assigned to the device group, which is how it should work with the ESP as well. Or you might read it that Autopilot will add the devices uh, the, the apps to the device group as it needs to. So I'm doing a little bit of a test here because I've got some apps that are deployed to all devices and some that are deployed to specific application groups. So for example, 7-Zip is deployed to an application group. Um, I've got another one in there which goes to a test applications group and I've got some that go to all devices. None of these, as you saw, are in the autopilot devices preparation group. So even though it says they should be, let's see what happens if they're not. See if any of them will come down during autopilot in this new approach. Okay, let's choose next. And scope tags, I'll use the default for this environment. Assignments, this is where we choose the group name. This should be the user group, not the device group. There we go. Six users, perfect. Choose next. And we have these things all ticked. That sounds good. Choose save. Now you'll notice that I've not added the device to any list. I didn't create a dynamic group that looks for ZTD, uh, that, that tag that Autopilot V1 used to use. So this actually will work for any device that the user logs into and is of the appropriate version and has the right level uh, skew. So it is possible to limit it just to corporate devices that you own using corporate device identifiers I'm not going to test that yet. I'm going to wait and figure out how that works later. For now, I just want to see if this works at all. So let's jump over to Hyper-V and we'll build this machine. And we get to sign in. Now notice it doesn't know that this device is registered to my organization, lastcoffee.co.uk yet because I haven't signed in. So it has no way of knowing. So let's log in now. And this is where it should change to the branded screen. Yeah. Just log in. Might need MFA, maybe? Yeah. Okay, so a bit of multi-factor authentication. There we go. And that's it. From a user perspective, I've typed my username and my password. And now we're just going to have to wait for it to finish setting stuff up. Okay, this looks a little bit different. So it now says installing the management extension, which will allow it to install applications and stuff for us. That's definitely different from the previous version that I saw with Autopilot, so that's interesting. Gives a few more seconds to get to another step. Now it's changed to installing required apps and policies for your organization. So, I guess this is where we'll find out whether it works or not. I haven't, I'm not sure if it'll list the applications that it's installing, whether it will just, you know, go ahead and finish, but we'll see. Okay, so it now says required setup is complete. The apps and settings for your organization requires have been installed. You can start using your computer. Okay, so that presumably means that the apps that I set have been installed. I don't see how it would install the ones that I haven't actually assigned to this group or to the devices themselves. So once we're in here, we'll look for the the applications which are which are actually assigned to the device and see if they're there. And if they're not, 
assigned to the device. It'll be very interesting if they are there. But I don't think they will be, and that's something we should look at. I'm just going to cancel that. Windows Hello. Okay, let's quickly set this up. Okay, we're in. Nice and quick. That wasn't very long at all for setting this up. Now I can see that I have Firefox Chrome Reflector. Do I have 7-Zip? Because 7-Zip was one of the ones that isn't deployed to this device. Now, Firefox Chrome Reflector are deployed to all devices. I think pretty much that would make sense as to why they're actually here. It obviously has waited for those to install before it shows me the desktop, which is interesting. The thing it hasn't got is 7-Zip, and, and it doesn't seem to have complained that it hasn't got 7-Zip, it just skipped over the fact that it's not there. So that was quick. I, I wasn't counting, although I am recording, so I've been recording this for about 20 minutes, and I don't think all of those were spent watching this uh, install so that was pretty quick really overall I'm impressed the features that it doesn't have yet I don't really think I care about hybrid autopilot obviously no one cares about so it, for now that would be a really obvious choice for moving to if you were doing normal autopilot, autopilot deployments except the fact that any computer regardless of whether you've purchased it as an organization or whether it's a, a personal device, can go through this process and become company joined. Azure AD joined, Intune managed. That's potentially worrying and maybe something we should look at solving. And it is possible to solve through corporate device identifiers. And we'll be looking at that in the next video, I think. So see you there. Oh. Do subscribe if you can, because I'm trying to get more subscribers on this channel, you know, just because subscribers are nice. Thank you. See you there.